Hi, I'm Dr. Nick Campitelli. Thanks for stopping back to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to be doing something different. I'm going to review a surgery that I performed in my office. It's an ingrown toenail removal. It's one of the most common procedures that I, it's one of the most common procedures that I do in the office. And as podiatrists, it's one of the most common pathologies or injuries that we see. So what I'd like to do today is I'm going to review the surgery or the ingrown toenail procedure here on the video screen as I'm discussing it, and we're gonna stop and pause and talk about what's going on and how we do different parts of this procedure. So let's get started with this video. Okay, first of all, we're going to anesthetize or numb the toe, and we use approximately three cc's or three milliliters of lidocaine and marcaine mixed together, and there's no epinephrine in this. So as you can see, we use cold spray and that's going to kind of numb the toe or freeze it before the needle goes in and it helps to reduce some of the pain. And to review, there's four major branches of nerves to the great toe and they're the dorsal and plantar medial digital branch and then there's a dorsal lateral digital branch and a plantar lateral digital branch. So there's four of these branches that we have to anesthetize with this needle, and we're trying to hit each of those by performing what we call a ring block going around the toe. So as you can see, I did that first one, and then we're going to slide the needle over. So we slide the needle over and we get under the extensor hallucis longus tendon. There's a tendon on top of the toe that we have to get around. And after we do that, we'll use some more cold spray, and then we'll go into the lateral. It's that dorsal digital lateral branch and then we'll pass our needle to the plantar aspect of the toe. And then we pull out, we use some more cold spray and we'll go across the bottom or the plantar aspect of the toe, putting the rest of our anesthetic agent. So again, we're performing it in a ring. You can hit all four of those branches with just two needle pokes and you can redirect the needle. But from experience and clinical practice, it's best to bathe the entire toe with that agent and it tends to do a better job numbing it so that you don't have to go back and add more. Most patients don't want to have more than one injection uh, if they can. It, it helps reduce the pain. So what we're going to do next is free up the nail plate. And you can see here we're using a small freer elevator, we call it, and we go under the toenail first and we're going all the way back under the nail and then we're going to free up under the cuticle or epinicum area. And I do want to stop and talk about what we're doing here. This particular patient had an infection that was not responding to antibiotics or soaking or any of her conservative therapy that she was doing at home. And the concern was it was red, but there was not that typical inflammation of the nail fold that you see adjacent to the nail plate. So it didn't present like that typical ingrown toenail. So everything was failing that they were trying so the plan today was to go in and remove two to three millimeters aside side of that nail plate. So what you're, you're seeing is we're freeing up the side of the toenail plate and we told this patient, you may have to have the entire toenail removed or we can just take that small portion of the side of the nail off. Um, if what we do today, removing that small portion doesn't work, we'd have to go back and take the entire toenail off. The other thing that we look for is if we get in there and we do take that small portion of the nail out and there's a lot of infection or pus under there, we will take the whole toenail. So after we free it, we then go and get a nail nipper or a nail cutter and we're going to cut a small portion of the nail plate. And we are keeping in mind that wherever we're cutting here, we're going to be taking that amount because we're starting our cut and we want to try to make it look as cosmetic as possible once that portion is removed. So we start the cut and then we're going to get a 62 or a chisel blade and we're going to pass that blade all the way back under the cuticle or epinicium area. And you want to make sure you cut the entire portion of the toenail because if you don't, you can leave a piece when we take it out. So after we cut it, we're going to go back in and you're going to see here, we're going to use our hemostats to grab the nail plate and we want to go all the way down under the cuticle area make sure we get it all. So that's what we're doing here. And then we're going to turn. And I'm going to stop this here. When we turn and pop it out, you want to make sure that you see a curved portion of nail plate. If you see an angle or a spike of nail, that means you, you didn't cut the entire way with that chisel blade or you pulled and tore a portion of the nail. And that could be concerning because if that small portion gets left under the cuticle, it can remain and act as an, uh, like a foreign body and lead to an infection or cause pain afterwards. 
And you can see I'm constantly using gauze to keep this area clean. And we're going to just pull and you'll remove a little bit of redundant skin from that area. And now we're going to go in with what's called a curette. And we want to free up and go underneath the cuticle area and make sure we're not missing anything. So we're going under there looking for any pus or infection, making sure that toenail is stable. So if that toenail is not stable and if it's loose and we find infection under there, that would be a reason to take the entire toenail off. And also, if we're probing around with that curette and we encounter bone, that means there was a sinus tract infection going down to the phalanx of that toe or the bone. And if you see or encounter that, that's bad because that could mean that we have what's called osteomyelitis or a bone infection. And we just express any remaining pus or blood out of the area. It is nice to get all of the blood out because afterwards when we put this bandage on, if there's a lot of bleeding, patients can sometimes get concerned because they see blood on their bandage and they'll call the office saying, I think I'm bleeding through. Is that a concern or is that a problem? So after we do the procedure, we'll put a small amount of Neosporin on there with two small uh, one inch gauze, wrap it with gauze and a Coban bandage and that stays on for 24 hours. And then the next day the patients will start soaking this in warm water and Epsom salts, just a few tablespoons of Epsom salts. You don't need a lot because it can burn or you can use warm water and antibacterial soap. And you're going to do this for about two weeks or until you start to see that area dry up and it looks like it's healing. And in between your soaks during the day you want to keep a band-aid and Neosporin on and keep it covered at all times. It's a myth. You don't need to let the toe air out. You don't need any air getting to the wound. Obviously, if the band-aids are tight and, and, and constricting it and you're getting, you know, like macerated tissue, that's bad. But we do want to keep it covered. So I hope you learned a lot from this video. And please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and keep your notifications on because I'll be performing more videos each week. We're trying to upload two videos a week. The video on Monday is usually a surgical procedure and the video on Friday is usually an educational video where I'm either answering questions or discussing pathology that we see in the foot and ankle. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it.